Welcome to the Crypto Mile, a square mile in the financial heart of the city. On this week's show, we will be exploring the world of cryptocurrencies. Together, we'll be deep diving into whether or not one could become the future global reserve currency. I'll also be talking with financial experts, Professor Steve Hankey and Jimmy Song about their long-term potential. Finally, we'll check in with the real wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. Welcome to the Crypto Mile. Confidence in the banking system is at an all-time low. Inflation rates are at a 30-year high. Governments have responded to this global crisis by printing more money. All of this has devalued the money in your pocket and in your bank account. Into this equation come cryptocurrencies, hailed as an antidote to society's financial problems. This digital technology is a Wild West space where economics meets computer science. Yes, the burning question on the tip of everyone's tongue is, in the near future, could the mighty US dollar be replaced by a cryptocurrency? Encouraged by this technology, countries such as Argentina and El Salvador have made groundbreaking steps towards potential future mass adoption. El Salvador, for example, made Bitcoin legal tender back in September 2021. And in the Argentinian town of San Martín de los Andes, 40% of the shops accept Bitcoin. At present, most of the big retailers worldwide still won't take it. But imagine if they did. And who knows, maybe in the future, your salary could be paid directly by your employer in Bitcoin. One current example of this is American football star Odell Beckham Jr., who is being paid his $750,000 salary in Bitcoin by the LA Rams. Next up, we'll be going downtown to meet with Steve Hankey and Jimmy Song to discuss and debate some of the most controversial and pressing issues with this new form of currency. It's great to have you on Yahoo Finance, Jimmy. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Let's begin with something current. Considering that today the cryptocurrency market is a sea of red, has Bitcoin reached a floor or does it have a lot further to fall? That's a great question. I, I would say that it's difficult to know whether or not it's hit the floor because half the equation is, uh, is controlled by the Federal Reserve. The, larger bear market that we're seeing, not just in crypto and Bitcoin, but in uh, in equities and uh, Series A valuations and almost everything is largely due to the Federal Reserve's uh, quantitative tightening measures. So if they continue to tighten, I think we can say that uh, we haven't hit bottom yet. But if the Fed reverses its policy and starts loosening, um, I think you can say that it, it will probably have bottom. Is there the case, though, that a cryptocurrency with superior utility could come in, supersede Bitcoin and actually decrease the demand of BTC? Well, many, many thousands of coins have tried, but uh, they've all not succeeded. And uh, the, the big reason why I don't think this is going to happen is because they all lack the main quality that Bitcoin has, which is decentralization. Would you be more of a proponent to store your Bitcoin yourself, like on a cold storage wallet or leave it on, a, on an exchange? Yeah, I would definitely recommend that people uh, possess their own Bitcoin because uh, as we've seen, a lot of exchanges uh, do some very shady things with the Bitcoin that they have. There was a story a few years ago of Quadriga, which is an exchange out of Canada, where the CEO basically left with all the money and was supposedly killed in India or something like that. Um, and this sort of thing is very common where if you don't possess your Bitcoin, then you really have a claim against the company instead of the actual Bitcoin. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Absolutely fascinating. Oh, thank you for having me. Okay, so now we've heard from someone on the pro crypto side of the argument. Let's check in with someone who's not so sure about their future mass adoption. Joining us is Steve Hankey, Professor of Applied Economics at the Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore and former economic advisor to the Reagan administration. Steve, we're going to begin this discussion looking at Bitcoin. Should nations with runaway inflation install currency boards with the dollar as a reserve currency, or should they peg their domestic currency to Bitcoin and create the so-called Bitcoin standard? Well, first, let's start with a Bitcoin standard. You can, you can forget that one. We had a little bit of an experiment with that in El Salvador as you know, and it's ended up being a complete disaster. And they've destroyed their credit rating for their sovereign bonds that are all denominated in dollars by passing this Bitcoin law. So 
So that little experiment was a complete flaw. Is there a future for any cryptocurrency, one that could provide strong utility like the smart contracts of Ethereum? Maybe, but only if they're developed in compliance with existing laws, regulations for banking and security dealing. They basically want carve-outs, exemptions, exclusions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to, to uh, operate in, in their own in their own world. Do you think then that's the inherent risk in, lo- in seeing Bitcoin as a long-term store of value? Because a new product or a new cryptocurrency with a superior utility could come in, supersede Bitcoin, and then the demand for Bitcoin could plummet. I think you always have to remember that anything is possible. Always remember Joseph Schumpeter's concept of creative destruction in which newer, innovative products replace older, outdated products. Somebody's going to figure out that they really can come in there with with a currency board type of system for a stable coin, and and, uh, you won't find a lot of these fraudulent things or shaky things or shady things around anymore. Steve, once again, it's brilliant to have you on Yahoo Finance. Well, thank you for inviting me, Brian. Very good to see you again. Next up, we'll be chatting with the real wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, about his stance on these digital currencies. At the beginning, you were kind of hostile to the cryptocurrency sector, but then you changed your position. Uh, When did you change your position and why did you have this change of heart? So it wasn't an epiphany in one moment. Um, but I think the interesting thing is, you know, the way you phrased that was very fair, but sometimes people will be like, I can't believe you were once negative. I'm like, did you ever hear of changing your mind on new information? I mean, like living an empowered life is based on like seeing what's going on around you, seeing what's working, seeing what's not, seeing what things change and then constantly adapting and growing, right? At the time that I really hated crypto, I stand by everything I said about crypto in 2017, except for one thing. Uh, I was wrong about Bitcoin going to zero. We all want to hedge against inflation. Would you back gold or would you back Bitcoin? I think the issue right now is you have to look at Bitcoin and, and not take a 12-month or 24-month horizon. With reasonable luck, I think if you take a 24-month horizon, you'll almost certainly make money, maybe not. But I think if you take a three, four, five-year horizon, I, I would be shocked that you didn't make money because the underlying fundamentals, I believe, are really strong. There's a limited supply, and as inflation does keep going and going and going, at some point in time, there'll be enough maturity with Bitcoin where it starts to trade more like a store of value and less like a growth stock. If I'm an investor and I'm a crypto investor, retail and I want to do a long-term play, number one, what do you think? Bitcoin. Number two. Ethereum. Number three. Bitcoin. (laughs) Before we wrap things up, it's worth mentioning that one of the most long-awaited events in the cryptosphere could be delayed again. Another problem has surfaced with Ethereum's merge to become a low-energy proof-of-stake blockchain. The current problem concerns the code that determines the difficulty level of mining new Ethereum tokens, or Ether, called the difficulty bomb. The date for the difficulty bomb upgrade has been pushed into the autumn. This is the fifth time Ethereum has postponed this update and has contributed to Vitalik Buterin's smart contract blockchain falling to levels not seen since 2017. Double digit inflation is forecast for the UK and other industrialized nations this year. People are losing faith that central bank issued money can maintain its ability to purchase goods and services in the long term. We heard from Professor Steve Hankey about the need to install cryptocurrency boards to run stable coins. This would create fully backed price stable digital assets. And if Bitcoin does manage to become less volatile, it could become the basis of a sound monetary system that is resistant to inflation. Banks could issue their own digital cash that would be pegged to Bitcoin. Bitcoin could then power a complex ecosystem of cryptocurrencies. With blockchains like Ethereum utilizing smart contracts to log land title registration, microloans and royalty payments. In this new world, Bitcoin, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies could coexist as they work towards different goals and use cases. Thanks for joining us this week on the Crypto Mile. We'll see you next week.